everybody. Uh, welcome to my series called Enjoyable and Sustainable Prayer, the 16 values of how to have enjoyable and sustainable prayer in your life with God. If you have already uh, watched um, uh, the first and second uh, part of this series, I encourage you to go back. Uh, if you haven't, I encourage you to go back and check it out. Pretty awesome stuff. For the rest of you guys that are uh, staying with me, welcome back. Uh, I just want to review what we talked about um Last week, last week we talked about a practical application uh, of combining um, worship and intercession is by just simply singing your prayers. And so uh, I was even doing it this morning. I remember I was in the prayer room in Hong Kong just singing the Bible. And uh, as I was singing the Bible, um, uh, the Lord was just refreshing me about different things about his character and about his nature. So just get into that, dive into that. So today I want to talk about value number three, okay? Value number three, but in order to understand value number three, I need you to close your eyes, okay? I know I got a haircut, I know that looks pretty cool right now, but right now, I need you to close your eyes, okay? And I'm going to read a passage of scripture, and I want you to imagine that you are time traveling back to the days of the um, early church, when Paul was walking on the earth, when he was um, uh, talking and speaking, and you are that local body of Christ, and you're gathered into this this person's house, and you're, you've you come to hear Paul preach to you today and speak to you about how to live a life sustaining God. And during this period of time, there's been tremendous persecution and per- tremendous tribulation that has happened. And Paul says this. So he says in Ephesians chapter 5, See then that you do not walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of God is. As Paul is telling us, you can understand the will of God for your life. There's an understanding. There's a way to know the will of God for your life. Do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. So that's the calling. He's saying, don't be don't be distracted by the spirit of the age, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. When Paul says that word filled, it's not a one-time filling. Even in the Greek, it's the continual, eternal, to be filled and to go on being filled and to go on being filled and to go on being filled. That never uh, ceasing filling of the Lord, the overflowing. And then he says, here's how you do it. Here is how you do it. Just imagine yourself sitting in that early church. And he says, speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for, our, for, our, uh, for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Value number three is uh, praying in the spirit and spontaneous singing. It's how to, it's, it's singing that spiritual song. Uh, there's three things that um, Paul tells us to do. One, three, he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit, but here are three ways to do it. When you gather together, come with psalms, come with hymns, and come with spiritual songs. Psalms are the psalms of the Bible, the psalms of David. These are biblical songs. Hymns were like the contemporary modern day hymns that are happening in the early church. Uh, which, were, which were happening, and it's kind of like when we come together and we sing Matt Redman and Chris Tomlin. Very similar way. And then it's um, make melody in your heart to the Lord. That spiritual song. That spiritual song is that spontaneous song of the Lord. God likes structure, but he also likes it when we do that spontaneous sing to the Lord. There are two ways that we can release that spiritual song. One way is by singing with your understanding. And the other way is by uh, singing in the Spirit. Singing in the Spirit. Both of these are really, really helpful and they have helped me in my uh, my walk with the Lord as I've been growing in that. So um, Paul says himself in 1 Corinthians 14, verses 14 and 15, I will sing with the Spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. He's talking about both. S- uh, singing with the Spirit specifically edifies ourself. It has no power to edify the person next to you, but you are, as you're singing, you are strengthening, you're allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you uh, on the inside. Um, and then singing with your understanding. It doesn't have to be from a, a planned song, but just singing to the Lord from Scripture, but just paraphrasing it in your own kind of language. These are different things. And so 
when we sing in the Spirit, we are, we are singing mysteries, singing mysteries of who God is and what He's doing. And, um, uh, it's, you know, we may not understand it when we first look at it, when we first read it, um, but it's doing a deep work. It's like fasting. Fasting, we don't really see what the reward is until after, and we realize five years later, wow, God, I have a deeper prayer life because I got rid of some things in my life to allow myself to be open to the Word of God. <clears throat> and so some people think, well, is this idea really biblical? Well, yes, I just showed you in Ephesians chapter 5, but it's also true in, um, in Colossians chapter 3. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you ritually in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. There it is again. He's exhorting them again. Do it. This is helpful. Encourage one another. And this is how you can encourage one another. You can encourage yourself. You can also encourage friends, family through this. I love doing that myself. I've had several encounters uh, with when I pray for other people and the Lord would give me songs for them. And I would sing them and they would, uh, I would be encouraged and they would be encouraged as well. So, um, so uh, those are just a couple things. There's way more. I'll give you a couple more at the end. A quick appendix that like, what are some biblical verses uh, that actually back up this idea? Because it's it's deep, very very important. And our and and at least in my walk with the Lord, I love combining that spontaneity and that structure in the same time. But a practical way that we can walk this out uh, today uh, is why don't you, when you think about um, when you want to pray for somebody or pray for your city, okay, you're in your secret place time, you want, you want to go into a time of intercession, why don't you spontaneously, maybe you go, you, you sing a corporate worship song first, like how great is our God or whatever, and then when you're talking about your city, just sing spontaneously over your city that you're from. So right now I live in Hong Kong, I, would, I could sing spontaneously over that city and I could use scripture as like a reference point but I want to sing from my heart that spiritual song that is edifying like Paul told us <clears throat> so I challenge you guys to do that this week be encouraged this has been very helpful in my life I have uh, assigned this to other people in different schools I remember in Amsterdam I assigned this assignment and uh, some people have thought it was very very helpful even use this when you uh, want to speak a, a, a encouraging word over somebody. So I encourage you to do that.